<sighs> Yo, how high can you jump without a single weight? This is the rest and test rule. Very simple, but something that takes time to develop and will be the key. There's a lot of different jumps you can do to improve your strength by just jumping. A different style of jumping. It's gonna be a little bit more strength because you're not using any speed. A really common question I get all the time is how often do I jump? Do I jump every day? How often do I rest? How do I know when to rest? So I'm gonna try to illuminate just the right amount of jumping. <laughs> What is good? My name is Steven Selly, I'm five foot 10, and my main goal right now is to get healthy and then dunking games, and this channel is all about documenting my journey to do so and helping you to jump higher, to dunk harder, and just achieve any dream you want. So subscribe if you're interested, and if not, just take a, enjoy this one, I guess. Yo, so why do I think so many people can get a 40 inch vert with no weights? First of all, because I did it. I did have strong legs, so that might be a caveat, which is why I think upper 30s is a definite, is a guarantee that I think anybody can get. But I had a video that had the three steps to jump higher, which is strength, speed, and 101% rule. So go check that out if you haven't, and I wanna elaborate on what you can do without any strength training. So here's the thing, jumping higher is just a very simple formula, but hard work. And what it is, is force you apply to the ground. Everybody has a body. I'm pretty sure you have a body. If you have all your limbs, that's even better. It's more weight on your body. So the reason I'm passionate about this is because I don't want anybody to have any obstacles. I want to see you max out your jumping. And when I say just jump, from one of my very first vlogs, I said just jump. Why do I think that's so important? Because when you're younger, when you're a little younger than me, I'm 27. If you're 20 or under, you're underdeveloped. You don't need to start putting on heavy squats yet. You can do so much with your body weight and so much with just jumping. And why do I think that's so crucial? Because when you're jumping, you're going down and up with your full body and pushing off the ground, right? If you do that and you try to push yourself, there's so much to be gained, your muscles are getting activated, and if you do it consistently, I've seen so many people get to the upper 30s with no weight training and just consistently jumping. So, how consistent do you need to jump? First things first, push yourself. If you're young and you don't have knee pain, push yourself. Try to jump high, document it. Write down how many jumps you have. You can't make progress if you aren't tracking data. That's a huge mistake that I made when I was younger. I wish I tracked everything so that way I can see, okay, my body can handle 20 jumps in one day and the next day I feel like this. And that way you have all this data. If you're not tracking, how are you making progress? When, someone, when I read that in a book, I think it was the compound effect, I was like, I, I'm actually not. Because if you're not tracking, yes, you, have, you might have mental things where like, you're touching the rim here. That's a form of tracking. But imagine if you're just jumping into thin air. How in the world are you knowing if you're jumping higher? Track everything you do. All right, so now if you're tracking and you listen to me and you start tracking your jumps, start tracking your energy levels. Start tracking how you feel on a jump day. Do you feel alive? Do you feel explosive? Do you feel energetic? Did you sleep well? Did you eat well? Do you have fuel in your body? There's so many factors, but if you start to track those things, you don't have to write them all down, but you do have to at least take note of your body, how you're feeling. Because I'm sure you've all felt some days where you feel like you want to jump through the roof and some days you don't even want to get off the ground. So how do we get more of those days where you want to fly to the moon and not come back? Okay, so the very basic schedule I'd set for anybody just starting jump training, if you have no consistent schedule at all, is just have one jump day a week. Saturdays, sometimes people have more free time, so let's go with Saturdays. Saturday's your jump day, don't do anything, just have a full test day where you jump as much as you can without hurting yourself. Start to jump, and here's the key. Jump as hard as you can, try to reach something. As soon as you find a peak, just keep raising it until it's just out of your reach. It's the same tip I've given before, but this is now to start tracking it. So if it's just out of your reach, see if you can touch it. If you touch it, keep jumping until you can't touch it, raise it, and then try a bunch of times until you're significantly going low or you're already getting sore because if you're jumping for the first time in a long time or this many times in one session you're gonna get sore in the middle of the session but that's good record how many jumps you have that's your first day congrats okay now just as important as the jump day is the recovery day how do you feel the next day what ailments do you have do you have any pain do you have just soreness soreness is okay stretch that body and then take note this first week of how to recover meaning 
what I want you to take note of is when do you next feel that energy? Because when you jump like that, that's high intensity, that's a full body movement, that's burning your central nervous system, you have to feel when your body's ready to explode again. Is it the very next day? Sometimes you have like placebo energy as I call it. I went so hard one day, my, my body's like, ooh, that was fun, let's do it again. But I just know my body that I won't jump well that day. How do I know? I've done it for years. But for you, take note of those days. Maybe you go out for a light jump day. So what is light jump day? I would really highly recommend don't jump the day after, but you can go for two days with a rest day in between. So you had your jump day Saturday, now you're jumping Monday. Do a light day, just go out there, do your dynamic warm up, touch the rim, see how you feel. That would probably be it, so that way you know you're not overloading the tendon. I don't want you to max jump that day. Another rest day and another jump day and see how you feel. See how your full body feels. Are you still sore? Because if you jumped so much, you could still be sore. Your central nervous system could take up to four days to recover. So take note of that. Rest until you feel that explosiveness, that adrenaline come back. Because when you do that, then you start to realize, okay, every four days after a jump session where I max it out, that adrenaline comes back. Because that's your body telling you you're ready for high intense activity. And that's why I wear this. There's different things like your HRV, which is your heart rate variability which can help you understand when your body's ready to perform at its peak. Okay, so this is the rest and test rule. Very simple, but something that takes time to develop and will be the key to you jumping your highest and making the most out of just jumping with no weights. So rest and test. So you did the first week. You had a max jump day. You had some rest days. You feel your adrenaline coming back. And then you have another jump day. You might even make progress if you rested, recovered, and you stretched, and you wait, waited till your adrenaline's at its peak, right? So now you have another jump day. So you had two jump days. Maybe it's on a Thursday, right? So you had Saturday. Saturday, then Thursday, and you're good to go. Now the next week, push it a little bit more. Either jump a little bit more on your Saturday or jump on Wednesday instead of Thursday. Don't wait as much. See how much your body can handle, but the point is start with just one day, one max jump day, and start erring on the side of caution so you don't overload your tendons, you don't develop any pains, and you could slowly build on that foundation. Also, there's a lot of different jumps you can do to improve your strength by just jumping. So we're talking about full approach jump because you want to jump your highest. But if you just do one step jumps from right here, that's going to work on a different style of jumping. It's going to be a little bit more strength because you're not using any speed. So strength and speed, just like my other video, is what combines to make the best vertical jump. But if you eliminate speed, you're going to use more strength. So you can use that to try to push yourself on your max jump day. So on your max jump day, don't just do full approach jumps. Do standstill jumps. Do uh, one step jumps, drop step jumps, and that you, you will see will get stronger over time. And if you do those in, co in combination with each other, as the weeks go on, you will get stronger and you will jump higher. Rest and test is a fantastic method for you to do because if you keep resting and testing, then you're going to make progress. Jump progress is not a straight path up like this. It goes like this. You're not gonna always jump your highest, but it's gonna continually go like that. So even some days when you feel maxed out energy, you're gonna have a low day. That's just due to a lot of factors and your body's adapting. You can't just always have great numbers, but the great thing is on those low days, if you push yourself hard because you're healthy, meaning you don't have any pain, and your energy's high, meaning you're not gonna burn out your central nervous system, those are the days you're telling your body you're trying to push yourself harder than you have, and you reach that stimulus. You hit that 101% rule that I always talk about. And if you stick to the plan, your energy level is increasing, your tendon strength is increasing, and now you're jumping more and a little bit higher. Keep that going and see how far you can push that. Push yourself hard, reach. If, you can, if something's just out of your reach, try to get it just once. Really push yourself. Telling your body you want to do that will help develop the right muscles in the right way, and you could jump so much better than you think then it might be time to strength train or it might be technique work. But that's what I want to help you with. So I hope this was helpful. Please let me know if you hit that 40 without weights. I truly believe so many people can hit at least 38, 39 without any weights. I want to see you go hard. A lot of it is just going hard, pushing yourself, being disciplined with your body and listening carefully. So that way you can build a solid foundation. Let us go. Dunk life. Oh, that's the anthem right there. Tried to make an intro, ended up making an anthem. Oh, hey. And Jumping, but all that type of stuff. stuff. You're jumping cap cap capability. Test your one foot. See, uh, whew.